So the new Intel Core i7-7700K Kaby Lake processor has the newer HD 630 graphics built in. Well, there's not a whole lot we know about the HD 630. I tried to look up some information and the best that I could get was we're looking at up to a 1.25 gigahertz uh, GPU core and it can share um, well, about a gig of RAM. So that's kind of where we set it at. This one is be running at that. AMD A10 7700K, that's right, <laughs> they're both 7700Ks, is your basic APU quad core. It's an A10 variety. However, for some reason, unlike all of the other A10s, this one features the cut down iGPU. So you're looking at 384 stream processors instead of 512 stream processors. And those are running at 720 megahertz. So we'll see how that actually stacks up compared to each other. Now let's take a look at the test system that we're looking at. Over on the AMD side, we've got the typical Crossblade Ranger that we've been using along with 16 gigabytes of DDR3 at 2133 with the iGPU clocked at its stock frequency of 720 megahertz with one gigabyte of RAM dedicated to the iGPU. Now moving over to the Intel setup, we're looking at the newer Z270 Maximus Hero board along with 16 gigabytes of DDR4. However, this one's clocked at 3200 megahertz. Like it or not, that's the kit we have. 2133 on one, 3200 on the other. That's just the way this rolls when you've got DDR3 and DDR4. And we're running, of course, the iGPU with one gig of VRAM dedicated to it from the memory. Both of these will be running at stock frequencies. We set the uh, the dedicated RAM so that they were at least comparable in that department. So what we want to see is Basically, where does AMD stand at this point with their APUs on their iGPU side and where, how far along has the HD 630 come in comparison to the earlier models? Because if we look back over time, we see that consistently the APUs have outpaced the Intel HD graphics by quite a fair margin, especially at 720 and even more so at 1080p. Unfortunately for today, because of the time that we took doing this, we are only looking at 720p results. So all the games that we're running ahead of time are 720p at low settings. So let's take a look at these five different games and see just, well, where things shake out. Kicking things off with Alien Isolation, what we see here is the Intel HD 630 slightly outpacing the Radeon graphics in the A10 APU. However, the A10 does prov provide better 0.1% lows, which could result in a smoother experience. However, another thing to take into consideration, and I'll notate it in each one of the games that we have, is graphical anomalies that we did see on the HD 630, whereas the Radeon graphics seem to play perfectly smooth, like the game normally would with even a dedicated graphics card as far as the visual fidelity goes. So we did see an, a, an odd issue in Alien Isolation where some, when light changed, the fog would disappear. So that's, that would show up and then disappear, show up and then disappear. It's quite distracting when you're playing despite having the better frame rates. Now Bioshock Remastered saw the average frame rate for the HD 630 far far surpassing that of the Radeon graphics in the A10. However, once again, Bioshock experienced an interesting issue with texture loading where it was almost by the time you left a room, the textures would load. So they weren't there when you started and they would start to load in, whereas that didn't really occur on the Radeon graphics. Now, Dirt Rally was quite interesting because the HD 630 absolutely obliterated the Radeon graphics, having n nearly double the 0.1% lows and the average frame rate being over 10, right around 8 FPS faster. Now, unfortunately, these numbers, I'm not really trusting these because if you look at this image that we're gonna throw up on the screen, you can see kind of the graphical anomalies that you got with this game with the HD graphics. So there were some really bizarre things happening in the game where some things would just pop out and um, entire textures would turn to different colors. So that's something to consider. Now moving on to Shadow of Mordor, the both both um, integrated solutions delivered the exact same average frames per second, but the Radeon graphics did deliver better 0.1% lows as well as 1% lows, resulting in that being a little bit smoother, although it's still fairly low frame rate, but it was playable on a game like that. Now the last game that we tested out was a more modern game in Titanfall 2, where the averages 1% and the 0.1% lows all go over to the Radeon side. Definitely one out there. The game was actually ended up playing it for a little while 
on both of them, to be quite honest. They were both perfectly playable with that game, although I wouldn't go into a competitive multiplayer match with these settings. The single player campaign was perfectly fine, although with lower detail settings at 720p. So at the end of the day, I have to say that I'm quite impressed with how far the Intel HD graphics have come. They've now become more of a viable alternative to, well, the APU. Now the catch there is that APU was on Newegg the other day for $75. So it's a $75 chip versus a $350 chip. Now as far as CPU tasks, the i7 completely obliterates the A10. We're talking nearly threefold the performance when it's in something like Cinebench R15. So that'll tell you with the dedicated graphics card, the i7 is clearly going to be the better choice. It's the newer platform and everything. But something that this really does bring to mind is the thoughts of something going forward with what we'll see on the, net, net, the next iteration of Intel processors, how the iGPU may perform there. So continuing this progress. So, you know, generation to generation may not see a big thing, but if you go back and you look at how far they have come on the iGPU, and then you take AMD and what they've been able to do with the APU that came out quite some time ago and is still running on older architecture like uh, DDR3 instead of 4, and how well it still holds up at the on these games when compared to a much more expensive and much more, well, feature fleshed out platform. So the A10 still proves to be very uh, capable and flexible in what it's designed for. But at the same time, Intel has done a very good job bringing their HD graphics along to the point where this is a viable backup. And that's the way I always look at like the APUs is, hey, you've got this backup if something ever happens to your graphics card, or if you're gonna upgrade your graphics card and you have to sell your old one, you're still able to do something. Well, if you guys found this video informative or entertaining whatsoever, please give us a like and a subscribe and we'll catch you all in the next video.